Hey there, minimalists, it's Alexa. Are you ready to take on digital clutter? Well, I've been doing that gradually this year as I finished up with my household decluttering following the KonMari method, and I wanted to share some things that I'm doing that are helping me streamline my digital life, that are saving my eyesight, and helping me use the tools rather than having the tools use me, helping me enjoy my computer time uh, rather than getting used up by my computer time. So I wanted to share some of the things that I've been doing. So the first thing that I've been doing is something that I had resisted years ago when I first read about it. You might have heard of Getting Things Done by David Allen, and one of the core principles that he follows is something called Inbox Zero, and so that's getting your email down to zero every day. Um, dealing with it once, you know, it's sort of the same concept of touch each paper only once and deal with it once. Well, now since we're living the paperless life, uh, we've got all these emails and notifications, and what do we do? How do we store them and process? them. So I have been working on my email. I got it down in January to inbox zero and I've been pretty good about that. I right now have three emails basically. One is for my music business, one is for my writing business, and then uh, one is a is sort of a legacy email and a lot of the junk is still going there. So it's kind of nice because I can get rid of the junk or ignore it simply by deselecting that mailbox. I've also tried to unsubscribe to a lot of things, but you might uh, have discovered that unsubscribing uh, doesn't always work. Now, if you, if you subscribe to my email newsletter, which you can get at my website, alexajazz.com, if you subscribe to my email newsletter and you don't like it, if you unsubscribe, you will definitely be off of my newsletter. I use MailChimp and trust me, you're gone. But a lot of these websites, they don't get rid of you. As bad as you might feel about doing it, you should just mark those things as junk. You're better off than clicking unsubscribe. But with my newsletter, please don't mark me as junk because actually that'll get me blacklisted. The second thing that I've been doing is finding ways to save my eyesight. I bought the laptop that I'm using to record this video in October promptly became addicted to the laptop. I was watching Netflix on it. I was watching YouTube on it. I was doing social media on it. I was writing my articles, which I do for work on it. I was composing music on it. I was doing everything on this laptop. Very quickly, I started to have eye problems, which I have never had in my life. And I'm one of those people where, forgive me, but ailments that I personally have not experienced, I often think people are weak to have them until of course then I experience them and then I'm like, oh, it's a real thing. So, you know, I never understood eye strain and there I was getting computer vision syndrome, eye strain. So I looked all up about it and you know, you've got a blink. Um, I find that when I stare at the computer, I, I really, I don't know, I make this staring face, I don't know what it is. And I feel like I like bug my eyes out or something. So, um, you know, you have to blink. Um, very important to take breaks. And of course I do this with my kids, but I wasn't following my own advice, limiting my own screen time. So it's very important to take breaks, um, you know, and the phone is worse, right? Because with the phone, you know, you're like right up in it and uh, that's not good at all. So um, got to do some eye exercises and I actually looked up some cool eye exercises. Um, basically what you do is you roll your eyes all around, you look up, you look down, side to side, diagonal, um, you do a lot of palming and closing your eyes, you look at um, close focus and far focus, so you look far away and then you look close up. Um, that's basically it in a nutshell, you kind of do that, but the main thing that you've got to do is, you know, exercise your eyes and not spend 12 or 15 hours, you know, at one distance. Um, the other thing is that computers have a flicker. And I didn't realize this. And so, you know, the, the, the image is, it looks stable, but it's actually constantly flickering. And, and that um, is, is hard work on the eyes. So, long preamble, Recess. And it was an app. It's free. And I am really liking it. Um, I installed it on both of my computers, uh, both of my desktop computers. And what it does is you can set how long you want a work segment to be up to 45 minutes. And then every 20 minutes, ding, ding, it rings a little bell, and then you have to take a five minute break. You can also adjust the break time so you could make it one minute or 30 second break. What I'm finding is, you know, those 20 minutes, I do not feel that time going by. And, you know, studies are showing like people aren't blinking for like 20 minutes at a time. So 
having installed that on both of my computers, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I'm doing a couple different things with a five minute break. Sometimes I'm going over to the piano and, and playing piano for five minutes. Resist the impulse to either cancel the break because it's not a permanent, it doesn't disable anything. Um, or just switch to your phone, you know. The point is to like get your eyes focusing longer distances. So that's one of the apps that I'm using, Recess, and I'll link to it below. Another one um, that I just found, this one is called Rescue Time, and I'm not clear on whether I'm using the light version or if I'm getting a free trial of the full version. I think it might be the latter, but it's pretty cool. It looks at all of your online behavior. You can turn it on or off if you want it to look at your email. It's pretty cool little stats on your behavior, and I'll, I'll show you a screenshot of it. Now the third app I wanted to mention for digital minimalism is, you know, when you're trying to get rid of what you've got on your computer, you oftentimes that find that things build up just like in your house with duplicate items. Well, an app that I've actually used for a number of years is one called Araxis Find Duplicate Files. And I'll also link to that one below. And Araxis Find Duplicate Files does just what it says. You set it on multiple folders and it finds if the files are duplicate. It doesn't matter what the names of the files are. It's looking at the actual binary content of the files. I also use Dropbox. You should be careful. Some automatic Dropbox settings like uploading the photos, before you know it, you can just eat up all of your memory space and you can also get yourself in trouble with data costs if you have some of the automatic settings on Dropbox. So be careful about that. I also wanted to mention with photos, obviously another huge topic. Now you can put Araxis Find Duplicate Files on your photos, and put it on your photos folder. It has some warnings associated with that because that can make a huge mess. You know, a nice practice to have consistently go through the photos, delete the ones you don't want um, periodically, and you know, clean everything off of the device. I have found with the iPhone, the new iPhone, there's a setting um, or the new OS. Uh, iOS, there's a setting where it will, when you delete things, um, it actually still saves them. And so then I was wondering why I had no memory on my old iPhone and I realized that it was saving copies of everything that I deleted and then you have to go in and specially delete those things. So that's something to be, uh, to check up on as well. Go into your download folder at least once a month and delete out everything that you don't need anymore. Okay, and my final point is, since I have this new iPhone SE, which I posted my unboxing video. Um, and I want to share, you know, I have all these devices, right? I have, I have the old iPad mini, which I use this on gigs. Um, then I have this rather dirty, it's dirty on the front. I have my first Mac. This is my first Mac. This still works. So I just got this iPhone and for whatever reason, the iCloud keychain is not working. So it hasn't enabled me to go into my Twitter. Well, huge time savings. Now I will say the only social media app that I have on my phone and I have had in my phone for a long time is Twitter, but that is sort of the one thing where I can spend a lot of time. I have never had the Facebook Messenger and I don't go on Facebook very much. Um, in fact, Facebook, I would love to just never have to go on there ever again in my life, but I do sort of keep it because it's part of my business. I go on Pinterest, but not in a social way. What else? YouTube, you know, I don't find really there's any way reliably to interact with YouTube on the phone. It's horribly annoying is my experience. So um, there's no risk of addiction there. So it's all a question of, you know, controlling your ability to interact with these things, which is gonna be good for your eyesight, good for your productivity, and going to keep you focused and keep you using the internet and, and computers in ways that spark joy, not in ways that make you feel overwhelmed or make your mind feel cluttered. So the bottom line is we live in an age of miracles and wonders. It's true, but use the tools. Don't let the tools use you. So I would love to hear your ideas for how you're achieving digital minimalism. Obviously the most digitally minimalist way to be is don't have all these devices. Um, so far these devices are pretty cool and I'm happy with them. Um, I would also love it if you happen to know about an app that exists that would like prompt you to delete things 
on your computer, you know, that would say, hey, you haven't touched this in a long time. Do you still want this? Or that would be kind of cool, right? Like a, a clutter assistant on your computer. Could get you in trouble though. I had something like that years ago and I really messed up my computer using it. So anyway, let me know what you think and how you're achieving digital minimalism. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.